Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Now, as many of you know, I recently checked out the Ryzen 5 1600AF, providing a detailed review, which was then followed by a reply to comments episode, which addressed a number of misconceptions surrounding this rather strange processor. So between those two videos, you should know pretty much everything you need to know about the 1600AF. How it performs, where you can buy it, how much it costs, what you need to support it, and so on. In short, it's an incredible value product, and if you're lucky enough to have it available in your region, and you want something for under $100 US, there's simply no better option, or at least that is my opinion. There were a few viewers who opposed that opinion, claiming that the Core i3-9100F is a much better choice. It is cheaper and more widely available, so I guess there is that. I also received some criticism for focusing too heavily on AMD products, which makes us appear a biased, so, Let's just talk about that one for a moment. This is something Tim and myself have discussed at length more than once in our monthly Patreon live streams, and this is because staying as neutral as possible is very important to us. Unfortunately though, unbalanced coverage, I guess is what we'll call it, is always going to be an issue. There will always be periods where one brand tends to dominate the coverage. It's simply unavoidable. This generally happens because one brand has more exciting products on offer, and typically when that's the case, they tend to release more products. For example, we've seen AMD dominate new product releases for the last three years with very new and exciting products, whilst the competition has done nothing new. Just refreshes and, I guess, name changes, shifts in the product stack. Obviously, first gen Ryzen was a big deal. The second gen Ryzen update was much more than a refresh, and I think it's fair to say third gen Ryzen has surpassed everyone's expectations. Meanwhile, during that same period, Intel's managed to split their mainstream LGA 1151 platform support while releasing nothing really new on the desktop for over five years now. And this is the very reason why we haven't bothered spending money on buying many or any of the 8th and 9th gen Celeron, Pentium, and Core i3 processors. We know exactly how they'll perform, as they're almost all refreshed products. So, with Intel struggling to give us anything new, and AMD continually pumping out new and exciting products, this is why the red team has been dominating the coverage. And it's not just here, but across all tech media. But I thought, why not? Let's spend some money on this thing and try to satisfy those who are interested. It is also one of Intel's most popular CPUs right now, as it costs just $80 US, or about $130 Aussie. So before we get into the benchmarks, let's talk a little bit about the Core i3-9100F. It's a four core, four thread Coffee Lake CPU, which means it's basically identical to an eighth, seventh, and even sixth gen quad core. That also means it's really not that different to a fourth gen Haswell quad core either, as the only noteworthy change here being the upgrade to DDR4 memory. When compared to the 6th gen parts, it's basically a Core i5-6600, which retail for $215 US, and then as a 7th gen part, it's basically a Core i5-7600, which also retailed for $215. Then for the 8th gen series, the quad cores were rebranded for the first time as Core i3s, though they didn't support Turbo Boost technology. Now with the 9th gen Core i3s, parts such as the 9100F are basically the same as the previous 8100 for example, but now with Turbo enabled, supporting up to 4.2 GHz for single core workloads. This makes the 9100F more like a Core i5-7600K, as it also boosted to 4.2 GHz, though it featured a higher base clock at 3.8 GHz, whereas the Core i3-9100F can drop down to as low as 3.6 GHz. So if we look at the specs, as we just did, it seems pretty clear that there's going to be very little in it when comparing the 7600K and 9100F, at least out of the box, as the Core i5 is a K-skew part and that means it can be overclocked, whereas the 9100F is locked regardless of the chipset used. That said, with a Z-series chipset, the Core i3 processor does support memory overclocking. But this all begs the question, why were Intel fans claiming the 9100F would dust the 1600AF when in that very review we included Core i5-7600K results? Perhaps it's the 9th gen designation that makes it appear more powerful than it really is. Not sure on that one, but whatever the case, today we're comparing them both head to head in an effort to determine which budget CPU you should invest in. 
So let's jump into the blue bar graphs. For testing, the Core i3-9100F, the Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Ultra has been used with DDR4-3200CL14 memory, and the same memory has been used to test all processors. Then for the graphics card, we have the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, as this will reduce the GPU bottleneck, allowing us to look at CPU performance rather than GPU performance, as this isn't a mid-range GPU review. Okay, so right off the bat here we have the Cinebench R20 multi results and the margins you see here will translate to pretty much any application that can utilize six cores or more. So basically any video editing tool, 3D rendering application, code compiler and so on. And these are all things budding creators will want to do with a budget processor such as the Ryzen 5 1600 AF. These aren't general purpose processors for just word processing, web browsing and emails. Though given some of the results here, the Core i3-9100F may be better suited for such general tasks. The 1600AF, for example, was 76% faster in Cinebench R20, thanks to the fact that it packs two extra cores with SMT support for three times as many threads. Also, as expected, the 9100F is very similar to the Core i5-7600K. In fact, we're looking at basically identical scores here. The 9100F does enjoy a clock speed advantage for single core workloads, as the 1600AF will only clock as high as 3.6GHz, while the 9100F boosts 17% higher to 4.2GHz, though despite that rather significant clock speed advantage due to the second gen Ryzen's strong IPC performance, the 9100F is just 4% faster than the 1600F when using a single core. Though I should point out this is in a workload that's not particularly memory sensitive. I should also note that the 1600 AF isn't a locked part and with a cheap $20 tower cooler can typically be overclocked to around 4.2 gigahertz. So about a 15% increase in clock speed over the out of the box spec. And this does see the Ryzen CPU overtake the 9100F for single core performance in this test. Taking a look at performance in 7-zip, we see that the 1600 AF is almost twice as fast as the 9100F for compression work. Here it was a whopping 93% faster. In fact, the Ryzen processor was just 11% slower than the Core i7-8700K. So yeah, a completely different league to the Core i3 model. Then when it comes to decompression work, that figure is blown out to a truly massive 127% margin, making the Ryzen CPU worlds faster than the 9100F and just 3% slower than the 8700K. It's total annihilation in Blender as well. Here the 1600AF was 85% faster than the 9100F. Again, it makes more sense, at least in terms of performance, to compare the Ryzen 5 part with the Core i7-8700K, as it was just 13% slower in this test. The 9100F does have the advantage of using less power, but when comparing total system usage, it's actually worse in terms of performance per watt. Here the 1600AF consumed 50% more power, but it was 85% faster, so significantly more efficient, and that's largely due to its SMT support. Okay, so it's time for some games, and first up we have Assassin's Creed Odyssey. This game punishes quad cores, and as you'd expect, the 9100F fares no better than the 7600K. Granted, we are still looking at playable performance with these quad core parts, but frame stuttering will be much more apparent with these CPUs. The 1600AF on the other hand was silky smooth with 1% lows of around 60fps and an average frame rate of 77fps making the Ryzen processor 24% faster than the Core i3. Battlefield 5 is an even more demanding title than Assassin's Creed Odyssey and here frame stuttering is a massive problem for the quad core processors. There is a 137% performance disparity between the 1% low and average frame rates with the 9100F whereas we see just a 38% disparity with the 1600AF. As a result, the Ryzen 5 part was 9% faster when comparing the average frame rate, but a massive 86% faster when comparing 1% low results. So this allowed the Ryzen 5 processor to not only offer more performance, but also a much smoother gaming experience. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is another modern CPU demanding title where the 1600AF was up to 28% faster, so again, another big win for the Ryzen processor. And The Division 2 is yet another modern and even more CPU demanding title, and here the 1600AF was 43% faster than the 9100F when comparing the average frame rate, and 33% faster for the 1% low result. Far Cry New Dawn, it's not a particularly CPU demanding game, at least not in the sense that it utilizes core heavy CPUs very well. 
However, we include this title deliberately as it is a good example of how some older titles behave with modern processors. It's also important to note that while the 9100F is 14% faster than the 1600AF, the Ryzen 5 processor still allowed for over 60 FPS at all times and didn't suffer from poor frame time performance. The game still played very smoothly. Hitman 2 typically isn't a great title for Ryzen CPUs. The third gen Ryzen 7 3700X falls short of even the Core i7 7700K for example. However, this title also requires more than four threads. In the case of the 7700K, it skates by thanks to its hyperthreading support. The 7600K though, it struggles and it's the exact same story for the 9100F. The game is still playable and relatively smooth, but the 1600AF does have a clear advantage here. Finally, we have Total War 3 Kingdoms, and again, the 1600AF edged out the 9100F, this time allowing for 10% more frames on average and a 23% improvement to 1% low performance. I don't think this comparison calls for any further analysis at this point. It seems pretty clear to me that if you want to build a budget gaming PC, investing in a quad core to save even $50 really isn't worth dealing with frame stuttering in a number of recently released titles. Though at this point, I'm not sure you can really call Battlefield 5 a recently released title. It's well over a year old now, so I guess we're just talking about CPU demanding titles. And the quad-core Core i3-9100F, it really was hopeless in Battlefield 5, it was pretty bad in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, fairly useless in The Division 2, and quite weak in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. It really was only the older, less demanding titles, such as Far Cry New Dawn, where it worked well or well enough. And in those titles, something like the 1600AF, or really any six core Ryzen processor or better, they also work well enough. So this is a situation where the 9100F is really starting to fail moving forward, and six core 12 thread processors like the 1600AF are getting better utilized. We're not far from reaching a point in time where quad cores will be completely unusable for any serious gaming, so investing in one now to save a small amount of money seems almost foolish. For US-based shoppers, the 1600AF completely eliminates the Core i3-9100F, as both come in at about $85 US, so it's a no-brainer. Get the Ryzen 5 processor, you'd really be crazy not to. As for my fellow Aussies, the Core i3-9100F isn't terrible value at $130, and with the 1600AF unavailable locally, the next best thing is the Ryzen 5 2600 at $200. And that's a 53% increase in price, and $70 is no small chunk of change, especially for a budget build. But I feel given how much more capable the 2600 is, it's well worth the extra investment, and in the long run will actually save you money. Alternatively, you will get a similar experience to that of the 9100F with the Ryzen 3 3200G for $155 Australian. So that's only a $25 increase for a CPU with a decent iGPU, and it's on a platform that currently supports up to a 16 core 32 thread processor. So there's also that. Therefore, it's my opinion that Australian gamers are far better off spending $70 more to secure a CPU with three times the threads, or at the very least, $25 more for the 3200G and a solid upgrade path. So even here in Australia, where the 9100F is quite a bit cheaper than the six core Ryzen alternatives, I find it a hard sell. And really, I'm not sure who this part is for. It's not a gaming CPU, but it's also not ideal for home theater or office type PCs either, given that it lacks an iGPU. For that, you're just much better off with something like an Athlon 3000G or the Ryzen 3 3200G. And with that said, I think we're done on this one. As always, I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Let me know what you think about the Core i3 9100F down in the comment section below. Do you think it's worth buying? And if so, what would you buy it for? Very interested to hear your feedback on this one. Also, if you enjoy the work we do here at Harbour Unboxed and you want to get more involved with the channel, uh, feel free to head over to our Patreon page. Links in the video description. You can join the Harbour Unboxed community there, get access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams, which are, I think, coming up in a week or so. Tim's just headed overseas for the moment, so we'll, we'll jump on to the Patreon live stream as soon as he returns back to Australia. And there's some cool content coming up from Tim on the channel very soon, but can't say anything more about that at this point in time. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.